After clinching the number one seed in the West, the Lakers came out flat against the Thunder in a 105-86 loss last night. LeBron was the only Lakers starter to hit double-digit points with 19, and the 86 points was a season low for L.A. The Lakers also only shot 13% from three and just 35% overall. It was also the only game all season the Lakers never had a lead. Fox Sports NBA analyst Chris Broussard joins us now. Chris, how concerned should the Lakers be? Should LeBron be after that loss? Well, look, the Clippers are one and two. The Bucks are one and two. And T.J. Warren looks like the next Michael Jordan. So I'm not going to overreact to what I'm seeing the first two weeks in the bubble. So Shannon can relax. I don't think they're in trouble. All that said, they obviously aren't playing well at all. Let's start with the stars. LeBron is not playing well and not consistently. He's had his moments when he really picked it up. Him shooting 42 percent, which is what he's doing in the bubble, that's uncharacteristic because he's usually very efficient from the floor. But I think with LeBron, like, he's the least of my worries. Because I feel like at this stage of his career, LeBron really is like, I is how much is he into, quote-unquote, meaningless games? Okay? They already have the number one seed locked up. The MVP race is over, if he was hoping to get that and hoping these games would count. These don't count. So I think at this point... He will. He's looking at the playoffs, and I think he'll be fine. I think it's similar to in Cleveland his last go round. Remember, they never had the great regular seasons you would expect them to have. But come playoff time, LeBron's a different player. So I think he'll be fine. Anthony Davis on this roller coaster ride is strange. How often do you see a top five, six player in the league go go single digits in scoring? It's just odd. That's a bit of a concern. But mostly, guys. It's the supporting cast and their inability to hit open shots. You saw Marquise Morris. I mean, nobody was within 15 feet of him on that highlight we showed, and he missed the three. They're shooting 25% from three in the bubble. Worst, that's worse than the league. They're shooting 39% overall in the bubble. Worse than the league. They're averaging 90-something points. They're the only team in the bubble averaging fewer than 100 points a game. So their shooting is a problem. Uh, KCP, Danny Green, both under 25%. Alex Caruso, for he looks okay defensively. He's shooting 11% from three. So it, these guys have got to hit open shots. The one guy that's actually playing consistently well is Kyle Kuzma. Maybe that's a good sign. But outside of him, these other guys are just missing shots. Man, and you just told me that I ain't got nothing to worry about, and you just laid out all those problems. But I got a lot to worry I about. I think they start hitting them. I think they'll start hitting them. <laughs> well, I hope I they start. I think they're going to shoot 11%. <laughs> Caruso, come on. I, I think the biggest thing for me was concerning is that the, the, the inconsistency in what I'm seeing with Anthony Davis. How you have a 34, a 14, a 42, and a 9. I mean, against, against, uh, against OKC? They ain't got nobody that can stop you. Uh, you know, LeBron is not, play, not, is not being consistent. I agree with you. But they can't hit shots. I don't know what it is. I mean, maybe somebody put a lid on the basket. Maybe they need to go see Miss Rudolph and, and, and about that monkey. But something ain't right. I mean, how you go 5 or 37? 5 or 37. And a lot of these, man, they're not even close. They hitting the, on the corner three, uh, uh, Chris. They hitting the sides of the backboard. They hitting the back of the rim. I'm like, is that what you're aiming at? Because how you hit the side of the backboard, how you hit the back of the rim, and you in the corner of the three? Man, I was like, it ain't looking good. See, and plus, the thing is, you give that team that's going to be the AC, they be like, man, they can be had. Oh, they can get got. And you look like it's going to be Portland because Memphis has stepped off a cliff. I, they, I don't see Memphis winning another game. Jared Jackson, their second best player is hurt. So they look like they're about to go over in the bubble. And it looked like it might come down between San Antonio in uh, uh, um, in um, Portland, but Portland, Portland got firepower. Those two guards can be dynamic. Nurkic, so Lakers need to pick Bella. it up. The, the Lakers need to pay. No ill saying the bus about it. They need to play. They know they haven't played well. You don't want to go. I don't care what anybody says. You don't want to go into the playoffs playing like they're playing. Even though these games doesn't count, they've already clinched the number one seed. I don't want to go into playoffs looking like that. Mm.
Shannon, you just left out the New Orleans Pelicans. Hey, y'all ain't doing nothing. You left them out. <laughs> they ain't doing nothing. I hope you're, you're we get them. You're going to regret leaving them out. <laughs> and we'll start seeing that in just a, a couple of hours here okay. because they're playing at 10.30 Pacific time, right? Yeah. 10.30, 1.30 yeah, 130 Eastern. Eastern time. Chris Broussard, I tried to explain to my man Shannon Sharp earlier in the show that missing three-point shots is nothing really that new. Now, they haven't been shooting 25% from three during the regular season, but they have ranked all the way down at 23rd in the NBA in three-point shooting for the whole regular season. They're a poor three-point shooting team to start with, and they're an even worse free-throw shooting team because they rank 28th if you take all the regular season stats, pre-pandemic, post, you know, and then into the bubble. Mm -hmm. They rank 28th in free throw shooting, 23rd overall in three-point shooting. They're a poor shooting team, period. They can negate that because they have been, overall, the third best defensive efficiency team in the league. That's that's extraordinary. I, I My hat's off everything. Mm -hmm. I, I give you props for that. And that is led and inspired by LeBron James. Oh, uh, you see him on deep. Okay. All right. He, he has shown me that. Didn't really show me that that much last night. Because that team just decided not to play last night. Yeah, they shouldn't even took the floor. And, with that. and it wasn't that they got shot out of the gym by the Thunder. The Thunder shot five for twenty-four from three, so they only made five and, and shot twenty point eight percent. But your team shot five of thirty-seven. So it's five. It's five to five, but still. <laughs> You still, you never led in this game because your co-star did not care about playing last night. And I remind everybody that the Anthony Davis who took 14 shots in the first quarter against Utah and came out on a mission to say, watch this against Utah. The Lakers psychologically own Utah. But last night he took nine total shots. Is that right? No, 11 total shots. Mm -hmm. And I can't remember any of them because they were all uninspired and forgettable. So, Chris, we did a story a couple days ago, reported from the bubble, that LeBron and Anthony Davis have decided to say no to shoot-arounds. The tradition, the historic tradition of game day morning shoot-arounds, nah, we're not getting out of bed, especially in the bubble. Chris, as you know, the bubble ride to the arena, it's actually a walk. It's a five-minute, three-minute, two-minute bus ride to these arenas. So it's not that hard to go get up some shots on game day morning. And I would suggest it's time for LeBron and AD to get their golden tails out of bed and get to the shoot-around, if nothing else, just to change your luck, change your mindset, and feel a little better that you did, LeBron said after the game, we're going to put in the work. Well, you, you haven't been putting in any work in shoot-arounds because you're not going anymore. So I would suggest you better start doing something to defeat the, the contagious, just pathetic three-point shooting because it's rubbing off on everybody. It always goes from bad to worse. AD said after the game, oh, one of these nights we'll hit 25 or 30. or I'm sorry, 20 or 25. But still... Maybe they will one of these nights, but in general, you're a poor three-point shooting team, and you lost Avery Bradley, who's one of your more clutch, dependable three-point shooters and obviously defensive aces. So you better try to figure out how to break the contagion down in the bubble, so to speak. Yeah, the interesting thing with them, if you look at their roster, they've got guys that get streaky from three-point land, mm -hmm. right? But none of them are really great. Danny Green can get hot. We know that. We've seen that in the finals in the past. But Danny can also be very cold from three. Trust KCP, me. KCP. Yeah. yeah. Right. You know that. I right? know. Which is first. All of their guys, like there's not a Kyle Korver or, uh, you know, certainly not a Clay no. Thompson, but a guy that you know it's automatic. He's hitting it from three. They've got guys that are streaky. And Deion Waiters, I've liked a lot of what I've seen. But obviously, he is throwing up bricks from three-point land. And again, I don't want to have to count on Dion or J.R. Smith. J.R. seems kind of on the outs as far as being in that rotation. But I don't want to have to count on either of those guys. Skip, I would agree. I mean, maybe make a change up. It's interesting because the Lakers clearly took the entire regular season very importantly and very seriously. AD and LeBron rarely sat out. And now they seem to be taking a different approach where, you know, we just want to be ready for the playoffs. We've clinched the one seed. 
and things like that. They may need to backtrack and just play hard these last, what, four games and then go into the playoffs rolling. But that's, that, that's my only point. That's my only point. The shots go in, they don't go in. Okay, I can live with that. But that effort that they put forth last night, nah, y'all got to miss me with that one. I can't deal with that. Now, that's mm-hmm. the problem that I got, Chris. I understand that this is a make or miss lead. And guys get hot. And like you said, they're not, they don't have a Clay Thompson that you can just basically say, man, he get that wide open, that's going to be automatic. They got streaky shooters. We, they got guys that can, might, can go five, six, seven, hit five, six, seven in a game. And then the next game, the next two games, they might not go make five combined. We get that. But that effort, nobody gave a damn last night about that game. Mm. And that's concerning to me. So, Chris. It'll be interesting. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Do you think they will give a you-know-what about tonight, 9 o'clock Eastern, versus those scrappy Houston Rockets? I, I was just about to bring that up. That's a great question because – you can look at it several ways. Are they upset? And do they really want to show Houston that, hey, okay, we're, we're, don't worry about us. We're still the team to be. Or is some of their confidence shaken? And do they go out thinking, well, if we play hard and lose to the Rockets, does that give the Rockets any type of edge? Does that hurt some of our guys' confidence even more? It would be easier to go out there not really play hard, maybe play LeBron and A 